It's Thomas Refurb here. I'm back. We made it. It just really makes you think sometimes how, you know, the earth keeps spinning and time keeps moving. And. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to work on Mossy Tang. Last week, we finally banged out that dashboard. So now it's time to install the roof for good, make a couple more patch panels, and if we have time, we'll paint it. So let's get to work! Now before we drop the roof on for the last time, we have to remove everything in this interior that's gonna get in the way of us spraying this entire inside with epoxy black paint, which is gonna look super good. So, boom, gone. Perfectly designed. Damn, who built this beautiful dashboard that you can see in the last Monster Tango video where we made all this from scratch, kind of. Bye bye. Oh, first time I've done that. All right, everything's out. We are ready to put the roof on for the last time. Now you might wonder, Tom, why are you holding a can of paint? That's because once this roof goes on, I'm not gonna be able to access any of the tops of these roll bars with the paint gun. And the plan is to paint this properly with a paint gun. So, what I'm gonna do is prime and paint the tops of these bars where I won't be able to once the roof is on. We got some good SEM primer here, so. I have gone ahead and scuffed and prepped and cleaned, so. This will help our cage stay nice and sturdy. Beautiful. All right, we just got some Satin black engine paint here, it's gonna do the trick. Cause we're really just painting the top of this. That's all we need. Cause we're not gonna be able to get to it. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Wow Tom, you're doing a great job. This almost empty can of paint is gonna be perfect for what we're doing. It's gonna be a perfect match, no one will be able to tell. Let things happen and use what happens and create your own masterpieces. Last time you'll ever see Masu Tang as a ute. Bye bye Masu Tang ute. <laughs> Now that the roof is sitting on here, we can see that it doesn't fit yet. And that is because it's sitting on the top roll cage. So, you can see here, I got impatient a couple months ago and tried to hammer it to fit, which looked awful and was quite stupid, but it doesn't matter that much because this is literally rusted through anyways. So to solve this problem, sure, we could redo the roll cage again and do that properly. Or, we can make some roof scoops that are symmetrical to the hood scoops and kind of work with the flow of the car. I think that would look pretty cool too. And it also means I don't have to do any more roll cage work. So, I've measured them out to be symmetrical with the hood. So, I'm just gonna cut and we're gonna get this roof to fit. All right, so I've made the basic cuts for these scoops, but they still require a good bit of designing that I'm not gonna do until the roof is on for good. So for now, I'm just gonna cut them very roughly, just so we can fit the roof on. Okay. <laughs> we got contact. First time up here, the roof is lining up with these pillars. Look at this. It's coming together. Kind of, sort of. We got a lot of work to do on that roof, but we'll maybe leave that for another time. For now, let's zap this roof on, which is gonna require a lot of fitting up. This is gonna be the surface that we actually weld the roof to, so I'm gonna go ahead and sand off the rust and tape and jump. Put some Bondo in there too. All right, now it's time to fit up the roof. I'm gonna try to get this floor jack to support the back side. Sit nice and even in here. All right, so supporting this is gonna help it not wanna collapse in on itself while we fit it up. Look at this, this is what we work on here. None of this car is gonna be perfectly symmetrical or nice by any stretch of the imagination, but it'll look cool. This thing's pretty damn close now. The only trim I have to make is on this passenger side pillar because it sticks up like one half of a centimeter more than that side. It's gonna make it a little cattywampus. So I just have to trim this, and then the roof can sit down flush and then we can start welding it. I love lead paint. I'm just starting to weld this um, because it's a pain in the ass to like 
get straight. So a couple tacks on each corner and eh, we'll finagle it. Damn, it's like I'm welding straight to rust or something. Like, oh, that's lead. That's actual lead. Should I, should I like eat it? <gasps> oh, 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 oh. I like that. I like that. That's a good guy. This is looking all right. I'm not gonna lie. That looks pretty good. Take a gander at that. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So in order to get this lined up, I'm pushing it with my crotch and a hammer while he pushes on the other side of the roof and he pulls down on this side of the roof. And with all of our combined effort, maybe we can close this gap. All right, we are now using a ratchet strap to pull this into place. That actually looks pretty damn close. This is pretty cool! I can't really believe we're actually putting the roof on right now. It's kind of surreal. You know, I just been counting down this time until an opportunity like this for, for years, ages. I've been dreaming of this moment. I've been edging to this moment. Enough. Keep that. Everything that's not oh, yeah, now that the roof is mostly welded on, let's pop the ratchet strap and see if the entire thing explodes or goes off kilter. Oh. Maybe the door will close now. All right, <laughs> Masu Tangu has a fastback roof that is most of the way welded on, but let's pause on that and shift our focus back to the interior, because I want to have that done already. The next step to having a nice, complete, finished interior is going to be creating some patch panels to fill in these ugly open spaces in the car that I don't want to have. So let's close them off with a little bit of <laughs> fab work. Back here in the back seat trunk area is where we're going to start. As you can see, there's a hole from the interior to the trunk. It doesn't look very good. This needs to be sealed off flat and clean. So what I gotta do first is cut off the factory bracketry for the interior that I'm not using for anything. And I'm gonna clean up some of these bits and then I'm gonna create a flat patch panel that will weld over this and make it look nice and smooth. So let's get to cutting and unscrewing. Or maybe screwing, if you're lucky. <laughs> As usual, using cardboard and my eyeballs to make this happen. Oh, cardboard is looking pretty cardboardy. Let's make it metal. Measure this out on some 18 gauge. Metal's all cut out now. I cleaned up the edges, so now let's prep it and weld it on. Let's try to center this up. That came out pretty nice, so now let's move on to these side bits in here that are going to fill in all this dead space and inner core panel area. That's going to be a lot of fun. Not. This right here will work, however, before I can slide it in there, I got to cut off this original sliding fastback louver mount, or whatever the f it's called, which is probably not good, but we're gonna cut it off. Whoa. I'm high as f 
whatever this old seam sealer's made out of is getting me <laughs> turnt right now. I cut too much off. Top five disappointing moments. Is there a snowball's chance in hell that this will magically fit the other side? No, it's actually worse. I'm now taking this as a defeat, and instead of continuing to try to fill in this space, I'm gonna back up the train a little bit, you know, back up the truck, back up the school bus full of kids off a cliff, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna back up and make little patches to go here right now, because I don't wanna do this anymore. That's making me mad. It's making me mad. It's making me full of rage, you see how red and boily hot my face is right now? I'm gonna make a patch to cover up to this point, because I wasn't gonna make those go further than that anyways, so. Right now, we'll make a piece that connects kind of uh, this area to the wheel tub all together. And it's gonna look really good. And it's also smaller and easier to make than this stupid, big ass, stupid piece that I messed up. If only cardboard could be used as metal. This car would be finished. I think we got this all almost there. This perfect eyeball patch. I'm calling that good enough. It'll cover up those holes, strengthen it a little bit, attach the roof to the wheel tub, and that's what we want out of this. And then we can move off of there and make the stupid patch that I don't want to make. make it fit nice and clean, you see? Like so. Which is proving to be a bit of a challenge. We're getting pretty daggum close here. I almost don't want to sand off too much. These gaps are definitely not perfect at all, but they're likely either going to be seam sealed or covered in sound deadening, so nobody will know. A lot of this is welding straight to rust and crap, so it both looks and welds terribly. Now I am finally tackling the part that I do not want to tackle at all because it is miserable and I hate it. But we're gonna do it because it's fun. Lots of trimming is gonna need to happen for this. All right, after uh, about 8,000 hours of trimming and adding and trimming and modifying, I believe this template will make a patch panel that we need. However, I'm worried I'm gonna run out of metal. So hopefully I do it right the first time. Watch this not fit, and then I will wallow up into a small ball and cry. I think it might work! After a lot of trimming later, this should hypothetically fit. Look at that! We can get behind it in the wheel tub and smack it out if we want to fit a little closer, but honestly, I think this will do the job. Clamp this down with some vice grips. Kind of hold its shape, hold it in place. Figure out where we want it. And then we can start packing it on in. Let's just start welding it and hope that it looks okay. It probably won't, but that's normal. Yo, know, little tacky boo there. This is how I'm fitting up the top. I have this body hammer that I'm gonna push with my knee and use the roll bar as leverage and then try to weld it at the same time. See this? Day's worth the work. Nice, solid inner quarter now. There's a couple little tiny bits I gotta fill in, but I'll do that later with weld and seam sealer. But take a gander over here. 
I have to repeat that entire process, so I'm not going to drag you through that with me. I'll be here cursing on my own, so this will be done right about now. As you can see, this side came out a little bit cleaner and I banged it out quicker. Also, filled in the gaps here next to the wheel tubs. So it's time to move on to the last portion of fabrication needed before we can paint the entire interior. And that's roof scoops. Alright, so I'm going to do some calculated guesstimations here and finish off these cuts I already kind of eyeballed earlier. Uh, so I'm going to make them all symmetrical and then I'm going to cut off these portions that have been hammered and the other side's rusted out. So I'm going to make some roof scoops out of fresh metal or at least maybe some patinaed metal off the old roof. Something cool like that, and then we'll go. We'll go from there. Smells good. All right, we're gonna use some uh, tape here. Get a nice straight line. Honestly, I might just put two sunroofs in this thing for the people that have to cram themselves in the back seat. People like kidnap. Now I'm gonna spend some time trying to model some scoops out of cardboard, and if I can come up with something that I like, I'll make them out of metal. Is what I'm going with. All right, now let's turn that cardboard template into metal reality using this rusty sheet metal. I will now break down this cardboard scoop and turn it into a metal scoop in this awesome time lapse. All right, this is what we got. The scoop came out super awesome, actually. Pretty sturdy, pretty nice, and. It looks pretty bad on the roof. So, now I'm going to bang out another one and then we're gonna weld it onto the roof and see how cool it looks. That'll be done right about. Now, the second one came out just as cool as the first. So now let's prep this roof and weld them on. All right, now that the scoops are finished and we have all of these beautiful panels done in the car, it's time to prepare for paint, which is gonna suck because we have to do everything. I wanna paint everything in this car from the trunk to the interior to the inside of the roof to the floor. So let's get a little prep work done. First thing I'm gonna do is pull out the Dynamat that's all old and scuffed up and I'm also gonna pull out the shifter and then we're gonna get to scuffing. Dynamat is very sticky, which is good for install. Bad for removal. At the same time, I'm just going to chisel up this factory undercoating here because it's actually retained a fair amount of moisture underneath and it smells really gross. It smells like a sewage fish pond. So I'm going to chisel all this up and that will help the car have a nice fresh start. You hungry? You want the bite? This Dynamat has been on the car for about two years. I'm pretty sure I stuck it on like the night before I went to the first Carlisle. So it has had plenty of time to melt and marry to the floor. And the stock undercoating is kind of chipping off, so I might just resort to hitting it with a hammer and uh, breaking it. This is miserable. I got a big one in the eye. One eternity later. Now that there is little to no undercoating left in the car, it's time to sand the entire inside, including the trunk, the floor, the roof, because we got to seam seal and paint this thing. So the tools of choice include this silly little stripper tool that I bought at Harbor Freight. We have another Harbor Freight tool with a wire wheel on it. It's gonna go And then we got a little impact with yet another knocky looser, I don't know what the f you call these, but we're also going to scuff everything that is bare metal. So this is gonna be a whole lot of fun and it's gonna be ready for paint very soon, so. 
Let's get to work. not trying to get absolutely everything up like this little waxy undercoating stuff is incredibly hard to scrape up my main goal here is to just agitate all the surfaces that are gonna see paint so that the paint will stick uh, and we're gonna dynamat over it anyway so it's not like you're gonna see any of this but I'm just cleaning off most of everything and agitating slash sanding all of the surfaces cleaning up the welds I just want this to be nice and adherable for the paint and that's all I'm gonna do This is gonna take a really long time, so I'll see you when it's done right about now. After literally two days of wire wheeling and sanding and scuffing and vacuuming, this is ready for paint, but actually not yet because I have to clean it. And by cleaning, I mean scrub brushes and microfibers and multiple rounds of Simple Green until all of the embedded dirt is off the floor and roof and roll cage. All the dust has to be gone, and then we can hit it with prep all and seam seal it, and then prime and paint it. This process is so easy and fast, definitely doesn't take multiple weeks, and definitely doesn't make you want to procrastinate and not do it at all because it is miserable. <laughs> let's do it, right now, let's clean. Okay, after about a half gallon of degreaser, this thing has been wiped down and scrubbed from top to bottom, so now it's time for seam sealer. I'm gonna take my prep all the same stuff I always use right before painting, and I'm specifically gonna wipe down the places that I'm gonna seam seal. So I'm gonna do that right now. Real quick before I prep and seam seal, uh, look at how much dirt was in the car. I emptied this vacuum out before starting. That's not too much, I could have painted over it. Paint day, the car is completely seam sealed, it's ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is back it out of the shop and then we'll clean all this up and get it ready for spraying. Now I'm gonna drop down the makeshift paint booth walls. I painted the Jeep in here, if you remember. Oh. So for the interior of this car, first we're going to start out with some epoxy primer and then we're going to go over it with this hot rod black. It's basically just satin black, but we're doing it right this time because I put so much effort into this car, I'm not going to spray paint it. I'm actually going to use this nice Kirker paint with activator and a spray gun and it's going to look really good. We're all set up and ready to go. Let's pull Monster Tango back in and do a shitload of masking. I can't even feel it. Can't even really tell I'm pushing it actually. Now we mask. <laughs> Look how fast we could do it. Okay, Masha Tangu is now completely masked off. As you can see, we covered the entire car and left the back window and the doors open so that I can paint some stuff from the outside so I can minimize the amount that I gotta climb around in there, which is gonna suck trying to get in all the nooks and crannies with this paint gun. You know what's also going to suck? Right now, when cameraman and I have to prep all and wipe down every square inch of this interior and trunk so that the primer and paint will stick. So, we're going to wipe it down. It's going to suck, but I'll see you when we're ready to paint. <laughs> Fun story, I actually almost did that yesterday because I drink water out of a giant gallon jug, and then yesterday I was working, and I went to the workbench and I grabbed this big jug, and I opened it, and I shit you not, I got to right here, and then I smelled it, and I was like, oh, and I put it back down. Good thing I didn't drink it, because then I wouldn't post videos anymore. I'd be dead. If you remember, we already degreased everything, so this should be fairly easy to wipe down, and it'll be done right about. Now. After a whole lot of prep wiping, this thing is ready for primer. So let's fix it up. But first, check it out. Look how clean it is in there. 
And look back here. Check out our fabrication work, all clean. We got our trunk, all clean, ready for paint. I think it's time to start spraying. Uh-huh. We found we're ready. Bend over. I'm waiting. Alright, so it's gonna be really hard to paint this. So I think what I'm gonna do is start with the trunk and then I'm gonna crawl in there and do the roof. And then I'm gonna figure it out because this is gonna be really hard to paint without being covered in paint, but. It's okay, it's what the suit's for. Locked and loaded, baby. <laughs> Let's lay down some primer. out of primer so I'm mixing up some more and as I'm doing this I'm realizing just how tough it is to get everything inside the car the roll cage the patch panels the floor so yes I am walking around and crawling around in there there's gonna be tons of fingerprints in this paint there's gonna be tons of dirt in this paint and I don't really care because we're covering most of it in dynamite and the car itself looks like dirt so we're just gonna spray away and it's gonna look better than it did Epoxy primer is now done. We did two coats, so now let's let it dry and we'll mix up some fresh paint. Now it's time for top coat. We're using this Kerger brand Hot Rod Black. It is satin black and it's going to look really good. I'm not going to paint everything with this. Like I'm probably not going to paint the floor because we're just dynamating over it uh, and the primer sealed the floor off. So I don't want to waste a bunch of paint. So I'm going to use this Hot Rod Black to paint the roll cage, the dash, the pretty panels we made, and the roof. And it's going to look awesome. Everything that's meant to be pretty and visible is now painted hot rod, satin black. It looks really good, so let's let it dry and see how it came out. Oh, it's pretty good, doesn't it? You wouldn't think Masu Tango would ever see fresh paint, huh? I can't wait to unwrap this thing, but that's not going to happen in this video because you're probably tired of watching it at this point. So I'm super excited to get this thing back together, which will happen next video. So thank you for watching the coolest damn automotive content on YouTube. I will see you very soon. <laughs> Love you.